guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range to talk about shotguns and why you don't see them on the channel all that often. And before we get started with today's video though, if you guys enjoy the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel, please just take a brief moment to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Also click that notification bell so you get notified when we post new videos. And with all that being said, let's get started with today's video talking about why I think shotguns suck. Well, sort of anyway. This is the Benelli M4. The U.S. Marine Corps adopted this shotgun. There's a long history of the shotgun being used by the militaries of the world and by the U.S. military during World War I, but even before that, frontiersmen moving out west, the shotgun was very commonly encountered because of its versatility in being able to defend people, but also to put food on the plate. But let's talk about the shotgun and its use in military terms. So in the First World War, the United States became known for using 1897 pump-action shotguns in trench warfare. And this really upset the Germans, and they actually filed a diplomatic protest urging that you know, the use of shotguns be stopped by militaries around the world, claiming that they violated the rules of warfare. So the shotgun has this mystique about it in the you know, civilian world, in the military world, and things like that. But this is why I don't really like shotguns all that much. Okay, they, they, they're a very specific type of firearm that have very specific types of applications. They're really good at putting food on the plate. You can take deer out with this with a slug. You can take birds down with bird shot. But outside of that, for defensive purposes in a modern military, or not even in a military, just in a modern home defense, self-defense type scenario, I think there are better options than the 12 gauge shotgun, 20 gauge shotgun, take your pick. So that's what we're gonna kind of talk about in today's video is why I don't think that 12 gauge shotguns like this make the ideal home defense weapon that a lot of people will tell you that it actually is. They certainly believe it anyway. So let's have that discussion today. And I also look forward to the comments down below because I'm sure this is gonna stir the pot a little bit and people are gonna have some pretty strong opinions about their love affairs with their 12 gauge shotguns. Now shotguns like this do have an application in the military. You'll, you'll see breaching teams using them to bust open doors and things like that. But generally after the door is broken open, you'll see a team go in and they'll be armed with different types of weapons other than shotguns, generally speaking. But let's talk about home defense because this is where I think people get led astray oftentimes by uh, other folks giving them, in my opinion, bad advice for a home defense tool. And I don't think the 12 gauge is ideal for that. It has great applications everywhere else. My argument is that it's a very specialized firearm for very special purposes. And home defense isn't one of its best purposes. And why do I say that? Well, one of the biggest problems with the 12 gauge shotgun that I have here, for example, is the fact that it has an 18 inch barrel by law. So in 1934, the NFA was enacted thanks to the NRA helping. And they required that shotguns have 18 inch barrels rifles could have 16 inch barrels. They were trying to make these less concealable and less used by, you know, crime figures of that era. And so we have to have this super long gun if we're going to meet the federal regulations. So when you're not trained and 99% of the people that buy shotguns for home defense probably never had a day of training in their life, they're going to take their shotgun, walk around their house like this, and when they go around a corner with this 18-inch barrel sticking out, somebody can easily grab that weapon and disarm you, or at least, at a minimum, wind up in a fight over your weapon. It's less than ideal, okay? At least in my opinion. Now, I know opinions are going to vary, and I'm sure you guys are going to make comments down below telling me how stupid I am. But for me, I don't want something this big in the confines of my house. I have better tools I'm more practiced with that I think would better serve me. And we'll talk about some of those here in a moment. The other thing that's a little bit limiting to the shotgun, especially one like this, is how the weapon feeds. All right, so to load this gun, you have to have individual rounds, and the military learned a long time ago having individual rounds being loaded into a rifle like the Craig Jorgensen is a bad idea because under the stresses of combat in a fight, it's very easy to fumble a loose round and not get it into the gun, thereby causing a big problem. So when you're loading the guns, they are not fast to load unless of course, you're into gun games, you have special tools for that. I'm talking about just regular home defense shotguns. So you have to make a conscious effort to get that loose round, orient it the proper direction, and then stick it into the tube and make sure it locks in. So it's a little bit slow and clumsy to load, but if it's already loaded, set by, sitting by the bedside, of course, that's less of an issue. And most self-defense encounters are resolved in just a handful of rounds being fired. But still, for police and things like that, 
I see this type of loading mechanism as being a serious kind of bad trait for this particular type of shotgun. During the pandemic, there was a lot of panic gun buying out there and a lot of customers would come into the gun shop at Copper Custom and other gun shops I'm familiar with asking for 12 gauge shotguns because they were told by somebody they trusted that the 12 gauge is the ultimate home defense tool. And in the hands of the untrained, it's probably more of a liability than it is an asset, but we've already talked about that a little bit. But one of the most common shotguns out there that people want to buy is a pump action like this one. And there's one thing that people tell other people to do in a self-defense situation with a pump they think is a benefit or is a feature of the pump that's desirable is that if you hear somebody in your house, all you have to do is say, get out of here. And they hear that pump and they're gonna immediately run away scared. Well, they may run away scared, but if they're armed and they're intent on doing you harm, you just gave away your position. So that to me is not something I would do. If I pick up a gun for self-defense, I'm preparing myself to use it in self-defense. I'm not gonna go around and broadcast my location if I can avoid it. I'm gonna try to use, you know, stealth and quiet cover concealment to get to whatever the threat is and neutralize it before it gets to me. And doing this is a great way to screw up that element of surprise. So I don't tell anybody to do that. I think that's one of the silliest things with regards to pump action shotguns. Now, one thing I like about the pump action shotgun is it's probably kind of the, uh, the top tier of reliability if you get a good pump action shotgun like an old school 870. Insanely reliable. Uh, police agencies use them for decades and decades in their squad cars because they weren't allowed to have rifles. And so the pump action is really, really reliable. Now this one, like the Benelli we opened the video up with, loads the same way. It has a magazine tube underneath the barrel. And so you have to load single rounds into the magazine tube to ready the weapon or to reload the weapon. And then you have to hit a release, in this case in front of the trigger guard, pull the pump back, that'll pick up a round and put it in the chamber. And now you can use the weapon. A novice that would buy a pump action shotgun, not go to the range with it or get instruction for proper use of it, may not fully understand the intricacies of what I just showed you. And that's the real danger of people buying pump action shotguns or any gun at all that won't go get training or try to learn something about them because they're gonna be operating on misconceptions and you know old wives tales and things like that. And they'll make a mistake of potentially firing one shot and then pulling the trigger, not knowing why the gun didn't, isn't shooting a second time because they didn't know to pump it. So if you buy a firearm of any type, of course it makes sense to get training at best, but at least spend some time on the range and get familiar with the weapon you're using. There's just something about shucking those shells <laughs> on a pump action I absolutely love. This gun is imported by SDS. It's kind of cool because it has a heat shield on here that's kind of reminiscent of a trench gun from World War I. But back here we have ghost ring sights. They're adjustable with high-vis front sights. And it's a Turkish import, has Turkish walnut on it. And it's just kind of fun. It's a very smooth pump action shotgun. So in a previous segment, I was talking about the limitations of loading the pump shotgun or the semi-automatic shotgun through the bottom here into a tube that's underneath the barrel. So companies have come up with alternatives to doing that. Now you're seeing guns use magazines and the magazines store the rounds so you can preload them, carry extra magazines. This one's a five round magazine. You can get them in 10 rounders, 12 rounders, things like that, but they become ridiculously long and more cumbers uh, cumbersome to use. And I definitely wouldn't recommend that use. But I've also found that these types of magazines and the guns that go with them are generally far less reliable than just a standard pump shotgun that has a feeding tube underneath the barrel. This Black Aces shotgun is another example of a Turkish shotgun that is available. The tube underneath here no longer accepts shotgun shells. It just simply is part of the pump mechanism. This one has an AK type release on it. And then you have this really goofy safety over here to uh, make the weapon safe or put it on fire. So a shotgun like this is something that I would stay well away from. 
Now there are gas guns out there. There were, uh, you know, like the Russian Sega 12s and stuff like that. They were magazine fed. And if you get online and do any research at all, you'll find that most of them require some fluffing and buffing and tinkering to get them to run reliably unless you're running super hot loads. Now keep in mind, the shotgun can shoot eight shot, which is a very fine shot used for bird hunting all the way up to slugs and buckshot, which is, you know, big lead pellets. So it has a very diverse range of ammunition you can feed it. But some guns that rely on magazines or gas operation will only work reliably with the more expensive and the heavier recoiling loads like the buckshot or the, uh, the slugs. So this gun, because it's a pump, there's your magazine release, which is right next to your pump release right here. You push that in and you'll see it'll pick up around out of the magazine. And then once again, you got to put it on fire and shoot this bad boy. So if you get used to the pump, it's again, reliable. It actually is a lot of fun to shoot. And if your gig is gun games or bird hunting, pretty good choice. I just wouldn't use this one. Shotguns will typically come with different types of barrels. And those barrels will have what, what's called a choke. And the choke constricts the bore. The tighter the choke, the smaller the shot pattern and the less dispersion that you get. One of the reasons people want to buy shotguns for home defense is because they're looking for that wide dispersion, something that I personally don't want. I want a more precise shot. I don't want to start slinging lead all over my house. However, let's take a look at what this dispersion is on this Benelli M4. I'm seven yards away from that challenge target. I'm going to go ahead and load the weapon up. Now, Typically, if you're fighting in the confines of a house, you'll probably be in an engagement distance much closer than this, but we're staying seven yards away for safety purposes. So let's take a look at the shot dispersion on this military type shotgun. So there's your dispersion, all right? You can see that it stayed right at the point of aim. At seven yards, those all hit. Now I'll be the first to admit, that's exceptionally devastating. That person, if they were a threat to you, would not get up from that. That would put them down, fold them like a sack of potatoes. So that is one benefit. It's a very powerful weapon at short range, but then you gotta deal with the size constraints being the weapons kind of big to navigate a house with. All right, so we, we shot it at seven yards. Let's go back to 15 yards and see what that shot dispersion looks like. This shotgun does not have adjustable chokes. Chokes can be screwed into the barrels of many shotguns out there so you can pick what you use. Typically fighting shotguns are gonna have a modified choke or an improved cylinder, basically open bore, meaning there's no taper whatsoever so you get the maximum shot dispersion. Okay, we're back at 15 yards. We're using the same Federal double lot buck. Gonna shoot the same challenge target and see what the shot dispersion is when we double that distance. But you can see how that shot dispersion opened up to almost a full man size from 15 yards. This is bird shot. This is a federal load. It's used for bird hunting. It's a seven and a half shot. Seven and a half and eight shot is almost like lead dust. It's a very, very small pellet that it's going to be uh, projected down the bore. Now, a lot of novices won't know what cartridge to use with their defensive shotguns. They'll just buy whatever is available. And some people will even go so far as to say, I just want to wound an attacker. I don't really want to kill anybody. And that's a deadly mindset for the person in the self-defense role. So let's take a look at what birdshot does out of the same shotgun from seven yards. Now that dispersion is pretty much covering the entire man-sized target already at seven yards. We double that distance, we're throwing birdshot everywhere, but keep in mind, birdshot loses velocity very quickly and is only really gonna be potentially lethal at close range. So what do I keep by my bed stand? A handgun in a quick biometric release safe and a PCC. This is a BNT SPC. This is an SBR. So it has a short barrel and it also has a silencer on it. Now, a lot of folks out there, 
Clint Smith being one, I have the utmost respect for him. He has a lot more experience than I do. Would tell you that a PCC is next to useless, just get a rifle. But in my case, I'm looking for something that's effective at short distances in or around my house that also has ammunition compatibility, compatibility with my sidearm and something that I can suppress that isn't gonna blow my eardrums out inside of the house if I have to use it inside of the house. I also can take precise shots with a red dot sight and a stock. So a handgun is almost always with me, but if I don't have a handgun and I go outside of the house, inside the house, I'd usually clear the house with a handgun and a light. If I have to go outside of the house, I would take this, which has a light and a red dot on it and that suppressor, but it gives me the opportunity to take those precise shots versus slinging lead all around or inside of my house. Very low recoil, quiet enough to be not quite hearing safe unless you're running subsonics, but in my opinion, a far better choice than a shotgun. So to kind of summarize the reasons why I don't use a shotgun for home defense is because it's unwieldy, slow to reload. I don't like 12 gauge slinging lead all over my house. I'd rather take a precise shot with something smaller in, in a handgun caliber or even 300 blackout. 300 blackout is a separate discussion, but I absolutely love it. And we put it in the same classification as a PCC, except it has rifle capabilities if you use supersonic loads. But that's another discussion. It's also important to note that the PCCs are designed to operate with magazines of different sizes. So this is a 30 round mag. I can get them in 20 round capacity or you can get them in 10 round if I wanna make the weapon even smaller. So it's designed to operate with the magazine, therefore it's gonna be more reliable than a shotgun with a magazine. Almost every shotgun I've used with a magazine has wound up having reliability issues at some point. So a good reliable PCC, in my opinion, is gonna be a far better choice for home defense than something like that. So I look forward to your comments down below, guys, because I know this is one of those things that's a highly debated topic, and it's something that I wanted to have a conversation on. So I look forward to those comments down below. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you content like this, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. You have all sorts of extra perks. You get direct access to me. I answer all private communications. You get early access to videos like this. You get access to a Discord server and a special chat rooms in there. And also we're doing Twitch and other things like that. So please swing by and check us out over on Patreon. On. Also, right here on YouTube, got a little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Click that join button and consider supporting us here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. I'll talk to you guys soon.